Welcome, everybody, and thank you for joining us for our initial uh, partner briefing for the 50% uh, Youth Participation by America 250 campaign. Uh, we're so excited to, to have you join us this afternoon. Uh, and of course, this is being recorded for uh, all of our partners to listen to afterwards uh, for those that weren't able to join us. Uh, we will start uh, with a, the first half will really be a overview of our planning and our thinking around the campaign uh, to, to really give you uh, all of the, the background on, uh, on, on the strategy that we're thinking about for this. Uh, and then for the second half, I would, would really like to open it up for conversation and feedback and discussion uh, from all of you uh, to really think about uh, the, the needs and barriers that we see to youth participation, what opportunities and assets are out there, uh, and, uh, and, and what you think we should be thinking about that we're not. So uh, the, the second half hour uh, will we'll have a series of prompts for, for you all to, um, to provide input to us uh, as we really continue to, to, to flesh out this 50% this Youth Participation by America 250 campaign. Uh, or shorthand 50 by 250, uh, which is what I'll refer to it uh, most of the time uh, as the, the shorthand version instead of uh, saying the whole thing. Uh, and I'd like to start with a quick video uh, to, to set the context around the uh, 250th. So I will go ahead and bring that up. We are dreamers. I have a dream. Doers. We have pioneered. I have faith for me. Persevered. Been divided. Come together. America today means something different to all of us. Yet we are united by our shared ideals. So as we approach our 250th anniversary, we are on a journey. To inspire every American to engage in the largest and most inclusive commemoration in our nation's history. Throughout the next six years, America 250 will host a series of signature events from sea to shining sea. Stories created by the people for the people. Showcases of American perspectives. Powered by partners that share the American spirit. Now is the time to come together. But America, I have never been more hopeful that we will get there. Let's use this moment to understand our past. So that's the that's the overall context that we're that we're starting this thinking in uh, is knowing that we have this huge celebration uh, of American democracy uh, in now five years uh, in on July fourth of twenty twenty six for the two hundred and fiftieth and we really believe that that'll be a big cultural moment uh, much like the bicentennial was. Uh, um, to, to really think about the, the future of the country and, uh, and to really think about the themes of, of citizenship and, uh, and democracy and civic participation and, and, and what it means to, um, to be a part of, of this country and, and building a better future for all of us. So, uh, so as, as we think 
as we thought about how to drive forward progress towards our belief that young people, communities, and our democracy thrive when we all work together for the common good. Uh, this idea around um, setting a goal around the, the 250th uh, seemed like a, a, a good opportunity for the field to really come together around a, a common goal um, and to really move beyond uh, you know, we, we didn't want to set another kind of YSA organizational, you know, program goal. We really wanted to, to think about uh, what's, a, what's a big goal that the, the entire field could really rally around um, with this, this kind of big cultural moment of the 250th. Um, and, 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 and what this really came out of as well is that we were uh, in, in putting together our next strategic plan, starting to, to look at where we actually are as a country in terms of uh, youth service, youth participation um, uh, across the board. And, and there's no great one perfect measure of all of this, uh, especially for, for younger age uh, students. Um, but as we kept looking around uh, at, at lots of different reports from the last decade or so, uh, we kept seeing this kind of mid 20%, uh, around 25% uh, participation rate uh, across the board. So uh, from in volunteering data, in philanthropy and, and donations, in uh, service learning or real world learning projects in schools, uh, voting uh, of, of first time voters uh, in, in every election, um, including midterms, uh, civic engagement, civic knowledge, uh, membership in after school programs or summer programs or, or community associations or groups. Uh, we kept seeing, right, you'll see all these numbers, 22%, 23%, 26%. Um, and, and, and while, you know, we don't want to, to focus on any one of those measures as kind of the overall definitive, uh, it became a pretty clear trend that, uh, that, that we're at about one in four or 25% uh, of young people kind of actively, regularly participating uh, in, in different ways, uh, in volunteering and service, in voting and civic engagement and in joining and leadership development. And, and when you start looking at some of the, the historical data on this going back you know, a decade or two, um, we saw some, some increases uh, in the early 2000s, uh, but basically everything has been uh, pretty flat or, or even going down a little bit uh, over the last 10 years or so. And so, uh, and so we really wanted to, to set this national goal uh, uh, really towards the, uh, you know, an end goal of 100%, right? YSA's vision has always been that, that service and participation is the common expectation and common experience for all young people. Uh, so, so we want to get to 100%. Uh, but we thought this, uh, you know, kind of taking a first step to get to 50% and, and tying that to the 250th uh, sets a, a bold, uh, ambitious, but, uh, but still realistic goal uh, when, when you think about uh, the capacity of, of all of the amazing partners that, that we've worked with over the past 35 years uh, that YSA has been around. So, uh, so this campaign is really going to focus on on catalyzing the field and, and all of uh, all of our partners uh, to really achieve this population level change of, uh, of increasing youth participation. So the uh, this is the the summary of uh, the, the logic model of the campaign that we've put together uh, and, and I'll go through each of these in a little bit more detail. Uh, but really we will use field building and, and field catalyst strategies, uh, working with uh, all of you and, and thousands of other partners uh, in, uh, in, in kind of all sectors, in all settings where, where young people are uh, to influence uh, uh, the, the direct actions uh, of local organizations and programs to really systematically address the barriers to participation. Uh, and, and, and we'll go through those as well um, uh, so that we can kind of break beyond this, this level where we've been at uh, uh, for the last decade or more uh, to have the output of increasing the, the number of opportunities and the participation rates, uh, including uh, 
closing the equity and opportunity gaps for uh, for all the various demographic groups that that we know we need to um, uh, be engaging uh, to again drive that that population level change of of participation being that common expectation, common experience, uh, so that our young people, our communities, and our democracy all thrive. So in terms of kind of that population level change, what we're looking at for the campaign is, uh, is to move beyond the, the level of kind of outcomes of, uh, of a lot of our day-to-day -day program activities, right? And, and some of these measures on the, the right-hand column are gonna look pretty familiar to a lot of you for things that you count around uh, youth engagement currently, right? The number of projects or activities, the number of youth engaged, the hours they're participating, uh, you know, the, the uh, people helped by, by that service or the participation, uh, you know, youth development outcomes or skills uh, um, developed, all of those kinds of things, which, which we'll obviously continue to do for you know, specific program activities. Uh, but for the campaign as a whole and, and as a national goal for, for the field, what we're really hoping is that we can get to this middle column of looking at the, the number of uh, institutions, so organizations and, and schools and, and uh, youth development programs and after school programs and, and you know, again, any setting where young people are uh, to, to be providing regular opportunities for, for participation. And then within each of those, that uh, that fifty percent of young people in that setting or in that program uh, are participating. So, for example, you know, in a uh, in a in a you know large metro area school district, uh, you know, a goal of that fifty percent of the schools are regularly providing these programs, and then within each of those schools, that fifty percent of the students are participating, uh, because we know too often. Uh, you know, we may have a participating local partner, um, but but the opportunity is still fairly limited within that uh, that setting to a, a, a smaller group of, of young people, right? In a school, it might be the student council or a leadership group or a, or a specific class that's that's working on it through a service learning program, um, and really wanting to make sure that uh, that the opportunities are are available and that uh, and that all students are are participating uh, or at least 50 percent uh, and that then much like the field has done with other outcomes like graduation rates uh, pretty successfully over the last couple of decades you know really splitting out all of the uh, the the groups of young people who are uh, not traditionally asked to to, uh, to to be engaged you know historically excluded underrepresented um, and, uh, and, uh, and underserved. So uh, uh, especially uh, young people of color, uh, young people from low income communities and neighborhoods and families um, uh, and, and some, some of these other uh, groups as well. Uh, because you know, we know, you know the, the top line number uh, is, is, a, is a good goal, but unless, that, uh, unless we're closing those equity and opportunity gaps, um, that, that we see in graduation and use development outcomes and health outcomes and, and all kinds of other uh, areas of, of working with young people. Um, if we're not doing that, uh, closing those gaps in terms of participation as well, uh, we, we know we're not doing everything that we need to be doing. Uh, so that uh, in, at the end, uh, you know, the, the kind of why of, of, okay, so increasing participation, but to what end, right, is that when it's the common expectation and common experience of every young person, our, our young people, our communities, and our democracy all thrive. And, and we see that uh, in lots of different ways. So the, the next piece is uh, looking at, at really knitting together all of the streams of, of participation and then thinking about how we're defining that. And uh, some of you may be familiar with uh, YSA's framework uh, of, of ASAP or awareness, service, advocacy, and philanthropy uh, as the as the as the action strategies that young people use to, to make a difference, uh, and uh, and we've kind of adapted that to to start um, putting together uh, these three streams of participation. So thinking of volunteering and service, 
which includes uh, the, the kind of entry level uh, around volunteering, community service, doing good, good deeds, kindness, you know, neighborly actions, you know, kind of the, the entry level uh, activity in volunteering and service. Uh, to service learning, project-based learning, action civics, uh, environmental education that has that, that, uh, that contribution component um, where it's a little bit more involved and, and a little bit more structured uh, than, than you know, uh, an entry-level volunteer experience. Uh, and then kind of social entrepreneurship, leading, uh, you know, creating new programs or organizations, which, which we know a, a lot of young people do uh, to really rally their peers, um, where they take on, uh, with, where they're really taking on that institutional role uh, 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 from adults, uh, and then uh, all the way to, to full-time national service, and really the, the long-standing goal in the field of, of having one million uh, AmeriCorps member uh, or, or service year positions uh, in the country. Uh, similarly, in voting and civic engagement, kind of the entry level of we want every first time voter to, to be registered and to vote uh, in, in their first uh, couple of elections that they're eligible to vote in. Uh, and then of course, paying attention to the election or doing kind of election related activities when you're, when you're not quite old enough um, to, to really build that habit of paying attention and, and participating in, in elections. Uh, to then individual advocacy and, and civic engagement activities uh, in an ongoing uh, being involved in the policy process to larger kind of organizing activities. Again, this, I, this similarly to, to the, the social entrepreneurship or, or leadership of uh, kind of bringing your, uh, their peers along uh, to, uh, to really public service or public office, uh, you know, running for, for one of the half million uh, local offices uh, when they're old enough, uh, serving on public boards or commissions, uh, uh, working for, for, for government um, uh, to really uh, uh, be much, much more heavily involved in, in the political process and in government. Uh, and the third stream is really around joining and leadership development. Uh, so the, the kind of entry level is we want every young person uh, to be connected to or a member of a, uh, of a youth development program, an after-school program, a, a civic program, a, a faith-based uh, organization or group, um, because we know that uh, it's through those groups uh, that, that uh, a lot of young people are introduced to, to uh, uh, participation and, and where those opportunities are come from. Uh, that, that it's much more difficult just as an individual young person out on your own, um, but that when you're a part of these groups and, and institutions, that's where uh, you, you, you get exposed to the, to the, the, the work of participation. Uh, and that through that, uh, you know, comes more uh, leadership skill development, uh, you know, holding formal leadership roles uh, in, in those groups and organizations, recruiting others, again, that going back to that as you go down the scale that, that bringing peers in uh, to, uh, to all the way the, um, uh, the concept around the civic 1 million uh, or, or kind of nonprofit uh, public interest education uh, uh, positions uh, that, that uh, again, um, kind of build the, the capacity of the overall field. So, uh, and so we know at different ages and different settings, uh, people are going to bounce around and do uh, different different things of these in different combinations. Um, uh, and and the goal is again really to present this as kind of an, a full ecosystem of participation, uh, instead of seeing all of these things as kind of one-off activities uh, or you know right now in a lot of cases fields that are out there kind of operating in their own <laughs> their own worlds right the the service learning folks are over here and the volunteering world is over here and the national service world is over here and the youth voting world is over here and the you know the youth development or after school world is is you know over here and uh, and and the more that we can connect all of this and and kind of present this united front of that we're all trying to increase youth participation uh, and knowing that they all reinforce each other um, right? If you're, if you're involved in one of these, you are much more likely to be involved in the other two streams uh, as well. So in thinking about what the, the work of the campaign will actually be, 
uh, is really going to be working with uh, all of the, the local communities and institutions and organizations across the country to address the barriers to participation. And, uh, and, and uh, this is one of the things that we continue to ask for input on, but, uh, but this is our starting list of, of what we think the major barriers are uh, based on the initial survey results we've collected over the last couple of years and, and looking back at lots of other surveys and research and reports uh, from the last decade. Uh, that, that there's a, an overall lack of opportunities and, and young people being asked to participate. Uh, you know, we know from uh, uh, both the volunteer management world and, and the, the kind of political campaign world, right? Like you have to ask first. Uh, and, uh, and, and I think the key is really making asks personal and meaningful and relevant. Uh, you know, we know that, um, you know, lots of students may hear things in, you know, school announcements or on social media, uh, you know, kind of typical PSA style, uh, you know, being asked, but, but if it's not, you know, someone they know kind of in, in their circle of contacts um, and, and that the ask isn't personal and meaningful and relevant, that, uh, that, that the connection doesn't often get made. Uh, the, the second is really a lack of skills or knowledge of how to participate. Uh, and, and, and especially if you're doing, if you're participating for the first time, uh, right? You know, if you're, if you've never uh, volunteered before or never planned a, a service project before, it can be really intimidating if you just say like, oh, hey, you know, go find something in your community to go, you know, make better and plan a project, it's, you know, just go do it. Um, you know, and that's why, you know, so much of YSA's work over the year has been, years has been providing kind of those, those resources and trainings to, to help plan, um, uh, activities. And we definitely see this in the voting world, right? That, that if you have never voted before, it's your first time, uh, you know, just going through that process can be really intimidating, um, especially in, in some states, right? Of, you know, when and how you need to register and then when and how, you know, when and where you can actually go and vote and, you know, are there ID requirements and, you know, what are the locations and what are the times and what are the restrictions and, you know, and where do I find out about candidates and how I do that research? And right, if 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 you've never gone through that before and not been taught how to do it, um, you know that that is a a, a big barrier. The third is around uh, lack of access or resources to to participate, uh, and we know that this is is very much driven by uh, kind of larger issues of of equity and opportunity uh, in in low income communities and communities of color that uh, you know, either you don't have the, 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 the resource of time, uh, you don't have financial resources either as an individual or a family or the, the school or, or organization uh, or program that you're in uh, because you're operating in a, in a community without, without a lot of resources. Um, you know, we see transportation issues come up a lot uh, in this um, that you know, that even if you have been asked and want to, even if you know how to participate and, and, and are prepared to, that there's some other barrier uh, or access issue standing in your way. Uh, and, then, and then the last one uh, is that there, there you know, is, is a group of that, that uh, you know, are either kind of disconnected, disengaged, uh, kind of checked out, um, often because of experiencing maybe one or all of the other three, uh, that um, uh, that that will take extra effort to uh, to kind of bring back into the fold. So so as we you know as we think about how do we get beyond the the young people that we already work with, right? That are kind of there every uh, you know are kind of the obvious go tos every time that we're planning uh, programs or activities. Um, you know that are already members of, of organizations and programs. Uh, you know how do we grow beyond that twenty five percent? You know, it it has. We have to be more proactive about addressing uh, these barriers. So, so that's really the the focus of all of the work with uh, with all of our partners is is you know, what um, you know what do you and what do they need to uh, to to address these barriers and, and to increase uh, that participation. So who and, and where are we going to work? Uh, you know, we really think about three major categories uh, of, of partners. 
Uh, one is kind of everything having to do with schools and education. So K-12 schools, uh, higher ed, uh, after school programs, um, uh, community school partnerships, uh, you know, programs that operate in schools and um, uh, working with parents and teachers uh, to, to, uh, to make sure that, this, that these opportunities for participation are, are infused in um, both in and, and out of school time. Uh, the second is really all of the, the kind of youth development organizations. So uh, the, the ones that kind of the big national ones that, that, uh, that people are, you know, very much recognized and have been around for 50, 75, 100 plus years. Uh, you know, the 4-H's and, and Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts and Boys and Girl Clubs and the Y's and FFA and FCCLA and, uh, and all of those, um, which at last count, I think, collectively reach about 36 million young people across the country uh, through, through all of their programs. Uh, and um, uh, after school programs, uh, extracurricular kind of sparks based uh, activity programs, so arts, athletics, uh, academic programs, um, uh, you know, where, where people are already a part of teams or clubs or groups uh, that, that can add service. Uh, and then, and then really the rest are all of the, the community based organizations and nonprofits. Uh, so the volunteer programs, national service programs, uh, issue based uh, organizations that uh, that, that want young people involved, faith-based uh, government agencies and government programs, um, uh, kind of everyone else. So, uh, so we're, uh, we'll, we'll have goals in, uh, in each of these categories as well. Uh, and, and so we're, we're setting goals for how many communities we're reaching, uh, defining communities as school districts, cities, counties, and states. Uh, that, that have kind of signed on to these goals at that community level uh, and then uh, and then breaking down kind of all of the types of institutions uh, in all of those different partner categories. And you'll see a few examples of those here. Uh, and, and this is what kind of meeting <laughs> this 50% goal uh, actually looks like uh, uh, over the next five years. So as um, as we think about building the capacity of, of our partner network to, uh, to help local institutions and local programs address those barriers, uh, we're really looking at the collective impact framework as the, the initial kind of organizing uh, thought uh, around this, um, around you know, how will, uh, what's the shared vision and strategies? How are we aligning activities and collaborating? Uh, what's the shared measurement and, and research and evaluation agenda? Uh, the, the communications and marketing and storytelling around this to really raise public awareness, uh, the, the policy and advocacy strategies, and then of course, uh, mobilizing the funding to actually uh, get resources, uh, additional resources into the field uh, to, to do this work. Uh, and so I won't go into detail on all of this, but, but we're outlining uh, some ideas that we have in, in each of these categories uh, over the next five years uh, for um, uh, that, that we're really uh, planning around. Uh, so, so that's kind of the breaking down each of the pieces. So again, kind of putting all of that back together uh, uh, in order to achieve that population level change. We're really focused on increasing the, the number uh, of opportunities and the participation rates. Uh, in, in those three big streams. Uh, and we're gonna do that by uh, making sure that we're supporting local programs and institutions and addressing those barriers to participation. Uh, uh, and we'll reach all of those local institutions and communities by partnering uh, with organizations in, in all sectors uh, through, through our field building um, and collective impact strategies. So that's kind of the summary. Uh, the, the going through a few kind of immediate priorities. Um, uh, I'm hoping you have seen uh, the declaration of participation that, that really outlines a lot of principles. And I think after hearing me talk for the last 25 minutes or so, uh, a lot of that language will sound very familiar. Um, we hope that, that uh, we can really use that as a, uh, as kind of a recruiting tool and a communications tool. Uh, so, uh, so certainly kind of sharing that. Uh, if you haven't signed on, please do. 
that's that it's right on 50 by 250 uh, org, um, where you, the, the same place where you registered for for this session uh, and uh, and certainly share this through your networks uh, as well. Uh, in terms of uh, our, our first year priorities and, and where there are some opportunities for collaboration, um, uh, the, the Declaration of Participation is what we launched with uh, a couple of weeks ago around July 4th. Uh, and then in August, we'll be rolling out a youth participation census uh, to really start collecting uh, some uh, kind of the, the current state of the field uh, that, uh, that, that we can know where we're actually starting this five-year campaign from, uh, in addition to you know, all of the, the kind of past reports where we've done that, that summary. Uh, and, uh, and, and a pro bono team from Deloitte is actually gonna help us out uh, by doing a more formal meta-analysis of, of a lot of those reports. So we'll so kind of between that and the census data that, that we'll start collecting in August, uh, we, we, we think we'll have a pretty good sense uh, a, a, um, uh, pretty good information to do an initial kind of state of the field uh, report uh, uh, in uh, by the end of the year. Uh, we'll then be uh, in kind of the fall, uh, really starting to kick off a whole series of working groups uh, and, and committees to work on different areas, and, and I'll go through those in just a second. Uh, that that will really work together to develop. Uh, an action and policy agenda for the, the campaign. Uh, we certainly have some thoughts of where we're starting that with, but, uh, but really want that to be the work of, uh, of lots of different partners through those working groups. Uh, that will then uh, really give a, um, uh, some structure and framework both to local partners to sign on and, and making commitments within their communities and institutions, uh, and, and to really then start bringing uh, uh, lots of partners together uh, in different convenings. Uh, we will be developing a clearinghouse uh, kind of resource database for, uh, for all of this um, to kind of put everything in one place, uh, kind of across all of those different streams and strategies and, and sectors um, uh, to, uh, so instead of kind of setting people out on the wide world of the internet, uh, searching for things, hopefully putting that all in one place. Uh, and then as we head towards uh, next spring, uh, really looking at Global Youth Service Day as, uh, as uh, a time to really uh, focus on the storytelling piece uh, and then to, to kind of start making every Global Youth Service Day uh, the kind of the, the day in the year where we, where we really count uh, what's happening um, so that then uh, basically every year in July, uh, we, can, we can kind of update the, the state of, of youth participation report uh, and know the, the progress that we're making uh, year to year. So uh, in terms of, of partnership opportunities, uh, there, there will be a whole lot of them, obviously over the next five years, we're just getting started. Uh, we want this to be very much, uh, you know, kind of co-owned by all of you. Uh, you know, YSA is, is kind of powering the, the, the staffing behind this, but, uh, but we don't want this to be seen as just a YSA thing. Um, you know, we really want, uh, you know, you all to feel like you own this as much as we do. Uh, so, so we'll be, uh, there'll be lots of opportunities for that uh, in the years ahead. Um, uh, you know, I think initially we, we wanted to have a lot more of this ready uh, by July of this year. Uh, you know, the, the plan was we were going to spend most of last year working on it. And, and obviously with the pandemic and, and lots of other things, uh, the world had some other plans. Uh, and, and we knew that people just needed to focus on you know, those immediate priorities uh, last year. So, uh, so we're really gonna be building this thing as we go uh, in the first year. So there will be lots of opportunities for, for your uh, participation. Uh, for now, again, promoting that declaration of participation, uh, completing the census uh, when it comes out in August, uh, signing up to participate in, in those working groups and partner convenings, uh, especially our national organization partners uh, and, uh, and, and we will send out invite lists for, for all of those. Uh, so, so you can sign up for, for any of those that you're interested in. Uh, the, uh, for, for more local partners, uh, connecting with our youth service zone grantees, and I'll tell you that who those are in a minute. Uh, 
uh, and starting to think about, you know, kind of if if you would be willing to take on kind of local leadership of this, uh, you know, that's one of the things in in uh, by this time next year that we hope to to have more formalized is um, is really starting to to identify who the the local lead is uh, in each, you know, city, county, school district, uh, uh, and state uh, across the country for this. To then. You know, uh, making specific commitments to action, uh, to meeting these goals within your community or program or organization, uh, and, and especially once those those kind of action agendas come out of those working groups. Um, in in the interim, there's a whole set of capacity building activities that that we have on our uh, on our website uh, that that especially are good activities for days of service, uh, and so really starting to think about 9-11 day, MLK day, and Global Youth Service Day as, uh, as, as opportunities to build that longer term capacity, uh, not just to, to plan uh, a bunch of volunteer activities. Uh, and then finally, in the, as we get into the spring and build out that clearinghouse, uh, contributing content uh, to that, and, and we'll, we'll send that out. So in terms of working groups, there will be a whole series of them on different strategy areas, different streams, different settings. Uh, and so, uh, and so this is um, once we get those set up in, uh, we'll, we'll start sending out invitations for these in the next month or so uh, to really then start meeting in the fall. Uh, once, uh, once we all kind of get back to school and get back to the, the kind of academic year programs. Uh, the, the zone grantees that I mentioned uh, were we funded 10 zone communities uh, last year and are funding uh, nine this year. Uh, and we'll have another uh, 10 next year for sure uh, with committed funding uh, to really start kind of piloting some initiatives around this. So if you are located in, in any of these areas, uh, please reach out to us and we'll, we'll, we can connect you with, uh, with the, the collaboration uh, that's operating in each of these zones to really take on uh, uh, some of this work. Uh, and then one of our, our kind of top fundraising goals as, as we raise dollars for this campaign is to uh, is to expand these number the, the number of zone grantees to from this 10 that we have right now in this pilot phase to 100 by the time we get to 2026. Uh, so one in every single state uh, and then the the top 50 uh, kind of metropolitan areas in the country so uh, so there'll be um, uh, Hopefully, uh, assuming we can we can uh, find this the financial support for it, uh, be able to uh, to do lots of grants out to to local uh, organizations uh, to to kind of do this capacity building work uh, in in their communities. Uh, as I mentioned, kind of looking at that days of service, uh, 9/11 Day in September, MLK Day in January, and then Global Youth Service Day in April, uh, as as three tentpole days throughout the year as as still very much opportunities to, to have service activities, but also to do some of these capacity building activities. Uh, and uh, and on, on our day of service website, which I'll drop into the chat, uh, lots of um, resources that we've already collected around some of these capacity building activities that, uh, that uh, until uh, those working groups develop the more formal kind of action agenda for communities and, and organizations, that these are good starting points uh, to, to think about uh, how you can kind of start down the path of, of that capacity building work, uh, and 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 looking at the the dates ahead for the next uh, year and a half uh, or two years uh, for those those days of service. Uh, so again, that's the that, that's kind of what we have as a, as kind of short term uh, partnership opportunities around this. And there will be a whole lot more uh, as this gets developed over the next year. So, so we'll keep everyone in the loop, um, but, but wanted to, to introduce some of that right now. So with that, I uh, would love to, to kind of spend the last 20 minutes or so uh, getting some, some feedback and, uh, and, and input on some of this. Uh, the, the I'll have specific questions as we go, but to start, just any kind of general reactions, thoughts, questions uh, uh, to what you to what you've heard. Uh, you can either put them in the chat, or I will uh, share a Padlet link. Uh, 
uh, that you can add uh, as well. So I, I uh, again, you can either put questions or thoughts, uh, and you can see some of the other questions that that we'll that we'll focus on. Um, but kind of general reactions or thoughts or questions, you can just add here if you want, uh, or in the chat. And I will see. Um, so uh, first questions around funding. Uh, so yes, that's the. Uh, this, this concept around the, the youth service zones, uh, you know, we, we actually just uh, trained the, the group that we have for this, this first year uh, that we're piloting this. Um, but yes, as I mentioned, the goal is that, that we're going to wind up with, with 100 of those grants uh, by a year, by 2026. Uh, and, uh, and so those opportunities will open as, uh, as, as we secure the funding for that. Um, uh, and uh, and and uh, those will be open applications, just like any of our other grant programs uh, that we have for YSA. Uh, uh, the the next year, which would be the um, uh, that we have for sure, will open probably next March or April for the 22-23 uh, academic year. Um, and uh, and hopefully we'll we'll do a round before then uh, if if uh, if some funding that we're that we're thinking we're getting will come in um, we'll uh, we'll open a round before then. All right. Uh, again, please continue adding in uh, to the Padlet or the chat any any kind of general reactions or questions. Um, but specifically, then I'd like to move on to kind of that barrier question of uh, kind of what barriers do you see to increasing youth participation, um, either that that young people face, so those those kind of four that that I walked through, or uh, barriers that that your um, you know your program faces, your school, your organization, your community. Uh, you know, we we know that that a lot of those barriers that that. That young people face, um, you know, we face as as adults and and as uh, as institutions. Um, you know, are there there are other barriers that uh, that you see that that we haven't already identified? So, yep, definitely seeing comments the 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 kind of marketing and outreach and um, uh, you know making it super simple and you know that, that easy sign up right the technology behind that uh, to, to facilitate that um, definitely so absolutely policies uh, yep Yes, funding, funding, funding. We know that's that's definitely a, an issue, um, uh, and you know, and one of the things that uh, you know, overall we'll be focused on is how do we kind of bring in more foundation, corporate, government funding, uh, and leverage those against each other uh, to to just be able to to get more financial resources out into the field. Um, you know, one of the things that we're that we're doing uh, is uh, is working with uh, with some of the other national service learning organizations uh, on a coalition for service learning uh, to, to really get uh, funding restored to learn and serve America programs uh, that, that where funding was elim eliminated uh, back in 2011. So it's been gone for about 10 years now. Uh, and, uh, and we're making some good progress on that where uh, the in, in the new appropriations bill uh, there's uh, there's a requirement for the Corporation for National Community Service to to do a report 
back to the, the Appropriations Committee on what it would take to restart Learn and Serve America, though we think there's, uh, and then to then set up for um, uh, a new appropriation for that in, in uh, fiscal year 23, uh, so next year's uh, federal budget. Uh, and so um, with that, at least starting to restore some of that Learn and Serve America funding that was lost um, uh, and bringing that back, uh, but certainly looking at uh, across the board, um, you know, kind of what's our policy agenda, what's our, uh, kind of, and what's the agenda to, to increase the, the resources. Uh, this might be pretty similar to barriers, but are, are there other are kind of needs that you have uh, uh, to, to, to increase youth participation? Uh, and, and obviously we know funding. Uh, and so, um, you know, I think that the question is always funding for what, um, you know, kind of what, what would you spend new dollars on? Uh, you know, kind of what, what, what do you need um, to, to actually do this? Yep, and I'm seeing uh, for local leaders to take this seriously, absolutely. Uh, you know, one of the plans, um, uh, as we think about kind of our outreach strategies around this, we're, we're looking at kind of those, those community leaders. So who's the kind of decision maker in a city, in a county, in a school district, at a state, uh, and, and getting them to sign on. Uh, and then kind of all of the partners and institutions uh, that kind of actually do the work uh, within that community. Uh, and, then, and then kind of individuals or smaller groups where, you know, individual young people or teachers or parents or families, um, you know, or classes or, or groups, uh, you know, they may not uh, represent the entire, you know, the organization or, or the institution, um, but, but are participating. So we're really looking at, you know, how do we bring that, uh, kind of the community-wide decision maker on the the kind of institutions that that actually make this happen, and then kind of all of the individuals that can really drive uh, drive the energy and and the peer to peer outreach. So, um, uh, co branding uh, resources, uh, programs, activities, absolutely. Um, uh, you, you'll even notice from the beginning, like we're not trying to brand fifty percent youth participation. Kind of with YSA's brand, uh, you know, obviously, again, we're, we're kind of the, the back end of this empowering it. Um, but but we'll definitely have uh, lots of opportunities. Uh, you know, we want that to kind of be open source uh, to so that uh, that like, you can kind of take that and make it your own and, and make it fit within your, uh, your branding, your programs, your initiatives. Um, uh, you know, we, we would actually love nothing more than than to see it adopted by by lots of people and, you um, you know, where, where uh, it seems like it's their thing and not ours, um, that, that would actually be a great sign of success uh, for, for this campaign. Uh, and then as, as we start wrapping up, any, uh, any other opportunities or assets that, uh, that you see out, out there that we should be taking advantage of or building on? Uh, and, uh, and is there anything else uh, that we should be thinking about as as we as we really you know spend the next six months to a year really building this out that uh, that you didn't see reflected today that um, you know that you just you know you can't believe that we missed or didn't think about um, that uh, that you want to make sure is on our agenda. So, um, yes, uh, Jennifer, the, this presentation will be sent out. Uh, we'll send both the PowerPoint and the, the, the archive of the, the recording, uh, and then we'll leave this Padlet open as well. So um, 
Uh, so anyone currently on the call can go back and add to it. Uh, and then of course, anyone who's, uh, who's watching the recording uh, afterwards uh, can, can add to it as well. So. All right, I think I that will wrap it up. Again, very excited to, to kind of kick this off, uh, at least in a, in a kind of a soft launch uh, and, and to really focus on, on really building this out uh, with all of you over the next uh, six months to, to year uh, as, uh, as we really get this going now that we're, we're five years out uh, from that 250th. So uh, excited to, to work with everyone in, in the years ahead.